With cut down day tomorrow across the NFL, a lot of teams are talking trades in the NFC East and across the league. Could Howie Roseman be up next? All that and more on this Monday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Eagles, your first listen each and every day. Welcome in Eagles fans to a Monday edition of the show. Shout out to our everydayers for making us your first listen Monday through Friday right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed at Game Time. Louis DiBiase joined as always by Gino Camilleri, the married man. Gino, welcome back, my man. Feels good to get a ring. This is the second one in my lifetime. Let's of course, get you a third one this year. Huh? Would love to get one from Jalen Hurts, but no, man, it was fantastic. Thank you for all of the everydayers that reached out and said congratulations. It meant the world, and man, it, it was a perfect day. And now I'm ready for football season. I had to do it before yep. football season. There's a reason we planned it. That last week of August, week Smart zero, man. college football happens. We're going to get a full slate of college next week. The Eagles are going to be back on September 10th. And we are done with the preseason. We are going to see this roster take shape in about 24 hours. Some difficult decisions and maybe some moves to be made, Lou. There's some chatter on the waiver wire that there is. things are happening around the National Football League, and in particular in Philadelphia. As Gino mentioned, the Eagles need to get from 90 to 53 tomorrow. So it's unlike the traditional years where you go from 90 to 75, then to 53. Mm-hmm. There's multiple rounds of cuts. No, the the big wave, and it's already started, Gino. They've cut a number of players. Um, some offensive linemen, Josh Andrews is gone, Dennis Kelly, a couple tight ends, Tyree Jackson, Dan Arnold of note. Greg Ward was not at practice today. Neither was Trey Sermon. At least they weren't participating on the field. So there's been some rumors Trey Sermon actually does have some interest across the league, potentially with a trade. But the big news today when it comes to trading, at least from a Philadelphia standpoint, is that defensive end Derek Barnett was given permission or was approved to go out and seek a trade, basically, because he's buried on this depth chart. And the Eagles, I think, want to keep him. It's why they restructured that deal to fully guarantee $3 million. But Barnett knows he's buried behind Hassan Riddick, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Nolan Smith. He's really not going to get in this rotation. I don't like Derek Barnett. I don't like watching him. Don't think he's a starting player in this league. Think he's always had a certain floor, but he's been very capped from his ceiling. But I do think he could probably get more snaps with another team. So more power to him. That'll clear things up for like a Teron Jackson or Janarius Robinson. So I think it makes sense for both sides to part ways anyway. Um, So Barnett could be on the trade block. Well, for one, I think it just a ridiculous move for a team to guarantee this guy three and a half million dollars and then him turn around and say, he's yeah, I fifth, want to get out of here. Fifth in the rotation. Yeah. I mean, I think it's justified for Barnett. I think, he's, yeah, because he's not going to play for the Eagles. It's like, if you're going to trade him now, why would you have restructured to begin with? I don't know. I just think he's had that in mind and maybe he just yeah. wanted to get the money and then they get out of just, town as well. Who knows? They should have saw that though. I don't know. I feel like they should have projected this was coming, but maybe they truly really did want him for depth and maybe they didn't think he was going to demand a trade. I also think they're very comfortable with the idea of a guy like Teron Jackson or Janarius Robinson they being that be. last guy on the roster and the yeah. versatility that they have between the ability to play those guys in multiple positions on that front And Derek Barnett, there are teams that could use a guy like that. I think Chicago fans have heavy interest. I know Locked On uh, Bears host Lauren mentioned that as well, that he's a guy that they need depth there. They brought in Yannick Ngakwe late in in this offseason. There's teams that need help on both sides of the line. I think those moves like the Dennis Kelly moves of the world are probably going to try and sneak them onto the practice squad. But right now, I think the objective is – Get as much value for maybe a veteran guy like Derek Barnett as you can. Same with Trey Sermon, even Greg Ward, for example. And let the young guys that have earned their way onto the roster yeah. get a crack at the 53. I think your Eli Ricks take a couple weeks ago was so spot on, Lou. That's not a guy that you can even put into the waiver wire. Try and sneak back a veteran onto the roster in one way or another. 
Yeah. Derek Barnett, that's another blockade in the way of keeping some of those young guys in there. I think right now is the time that you strike, and it's the last kind of tie to the to the previous regime and that culture that just we want to get rid of. And it's always him. It truly is. And he's still fighting in camp and he's just got to know his role. And I think it's tough. It's, he's better suited elsewhere outside of Philadelphia. I, I'm with you. I, I don't think he fits when it comes to the depth because they have younger, better options. He's not going to get many snaps. And the worst case scenario for us is that he's on the field, but the best case scenario for him is that he's on the field. So right, I exactly. think it's a, a win-win for both sides. Not to mention too, you have some defensive tackles that are good pass rushers that, you know, somebody like Milton Williams has versatility. He's played on the edge before. So, you know, obviously you don't want to move defensive tackles, but I think at the same time you have some versatility there. You're very deep when it comes to defensive linemen. So I just don't really feel like there was mm-hmm. a fit for Barnett. It always felt awkward to begin with. So I think this makes a lot of sense. I just am confused why Barnett was the one that pushed it and it wasn't the Eagles earlier because it does make sense for Barnett but it makes sense for the Eagles too to part ways so I, I would much rather keep somebody like Janarius Robinson is that nice developmental piece or Teron Jackson I think is ready for regular season snaps anyway and mm-hmm. can probably get you what Barnett would get you at this point I mean again Derek Barnett was never terrible would get you five sacks a year as a top four edge and rotating in but he was never better than that. He always capped out right there, and he never really reached any higher potential that the Eagles probably thought he had. The other thing, too, is Gino, and we're going to get into this in the second uh, segment, there are some injuries to Hassan Reddick and Nolan Smith. Maybe that's part of the Eagles' hesitation. But if you can get a draft pick for Barnett, again, like we said, I think some of these young kids can step up and, again, mask, you know, equal that production that DB would give you. Unless some team... I mean, unless Baltimore is crazy and they're like, we'll give you Patrick Queen for Derek which Barnett, which is a long shot, right? You're not maybe going you get, to... Maybe you get like a linebacker swap that they some other team has their version of Barnett. It's not going to be Queen, but somebody to a lower level. I mean, I'm down for that kind of swap. Unless that happens, I don't yeah. think it's going to be a move to bring in another body onto this roster. It has Doubtful. to be a draft pick because you have yeah. so many young guys as it is. You have enough guys for the 53 a six, I think a six and maybe a At conditional best. seven of some yeah. sort, maybe, or a seven swap would be a good little move that you could I just get want off the roster. Burnout. I'll I take anything too. you're suggesting, Gino. <laughs> and that three and a half million dollar guarantee to like, get it off the books, like get that cap yeah. hit off the books, bring in a roster spot. Maybe you can do something, maybe a little bigger move. That JT thing is still kind of lingering around. We don't know where he's going. Just mm. set yourself up to have the youngest, Best roster that fits your culture, and Derek Barnett is not part of that 53 man, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. Gino, let's continue to talk edge rushers coming up next right here on Lockdown Eagles. Have some updates to injuries for Hassan Riddick and Nolan Smith. All that and more on your way. Monday edition of Lockdown Eagles. And today's show is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. August is here, and you know what that means. The official start of fantasy football drafting month. A lot of leagues wait until the end of August to avoid injuries. We've had some times in the past where we've drafted in June or July, and we've paid dearly. So this is the right time to draft with Underdog Fantasy. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you do is one live snake draft. I've been doing a few. They're really fun no waivers no trades underdog sets your best lineup every single week try it out with underdogs best ball mania tournament as well the largest fantasy football contest of all time is back and even bigger with 15 million dollars of total prizes up for grabs including an absurd three million dollars going to the winner last year the winner drafted their team in july so don't wait around get involved visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and sign up with the promo code locked on to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars it's underdog fantasy Fantasy promo code locked on again underdog is the easiest place to play fantasy football and the best place to play best ball i've been doing snake you know traditional fantasy football leagues for most of my life but been getting more involved in leagues like best ball got to do them over at underdog fantasy all right, Eagles fans, we're continuing on this Monday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. Shout out to our everydayers for making us your first listen Monday through Friday. Louis DiBiase alongside Gino Camilleri. Gino, we're going to talk some more pass rushers here. Obviously, we already discussed Derek Barnett demanding a trade, or I don't know if it was demanded trade, but he, he wants out at this point mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, and the Eagles are going to explore some options there. Want to talk some Hassan Riddick and Nolan, Sweat, uh, Nolan Smith. Nolan but Smith. I will, <laughs> that hybrid would be great. Uh, I will, I want to get into real quick though 
of course, you were getting married this weekend, but there was also a trade in the NFC East. And no, not the Trey Lance one. We'll get into that later on in the show. Isaiah Simmons, who was a player that we mentioned a lot on this podcast as a potential option for Howie Roseman to bring in to get some more versatility and more talent at linebacker. He was dealt to the rival New York Giants. Your thoughts on that trade for me? I'm a little bummed that this was a move Howie didn't make. I think he's comfortable with what he has. So maybe Mm -hmm. that might put you at ease a little bit. And a team like the Giants making a move for Isaiah Simmons, I think it fits what Brian Dable and Joe Shane are trying to do. And it fits the modern take of most GMs and especially in the NFC East. I think three out of the four teams are trying to go to the future, especially now with Dan Snyder out of Washington and Jerry Jones just made a quarterback controversy just for the sake of reality television. But I think Philadelphia is in a good spot right now, Lou. I think those trades that they're trying to make, they probably didn't want to push the envelope as much now because of the results that they have seen over the last couple of weeks. I mean, you look into Zach Cunningham coming in here and being a starting linebacker for you, right? Sidney Brown has shown out at that safety type of position. Where would Isaiah Simmons kind of fit? Would he be competing for a role yeah. at linebacker? Would he be that third safety option for you right now? I'm not of a hybrid terribly, probably. Yeah, I'm not terribly mad that they missed out on that move. I'm sure he did make a call, but good for the Giants on there. And I think it's, it's a good move to get him out of Arizona. Yeah. I think if you're going to go to Arizona, Buda Baker is the guy that I'm still trying to call on, trying to get that guy off of the Titanic. Well, they're tanking, you know. Iceberg. I mean, they also traded one of their starting offensive linemen. They mm-hmm. just released their only veteran quarterback that had experience playing for them the last few years with Colt McCoy. They're I mean, an they're, XFL team, yeah. They're totally tanking. So, yeah, Buda Baker could still be available. And I'm very, very excited right now about Reed Blankenship and Sidney Brown. But if you can mm-hmm. get a Buda Baker this year and run those three guys this year, I'm all in on that. But, yeah, again, I'm not devastated they didn't get Isaiah Simmons. I will say, though, it's a move I really like, and I'm jealous that New York did it. Isaiah Simmons nearly sacked Aaron Rodgers in his first game just because I think he's a player that obviously didn't meet the potential of a top-10 pick like he was with Arizona. But Hassan Riddick was another guy in Arizona that was used incorrectly. And so if Simmons is used as that hybrid attack mode kind of specialist – I think he can still be a very effective player. And for me, I wanted it because with Sean Desai's defense, I just felt like he could be a good fit. Like Desai now is using guys in different ways that Jonathan Gannon wouldn't. And he has a new attack mode style of defense. So for me, I was excited about the possibility of Simmons coming in to Sean Desai's defense and and being an upgrade talent-wise over what they have at linebacker behind Dean. Uh, Especially, too, it only cost, what, I think one or two conditional late picks. So, yeah, it's, again, not a trade that I'm, like, devastated how he didn't make. It's at linebacker. They're going to be fine regardless of that position. But it is one that I say I I would like to have. Like, looking at what New York did, I I do approve of that trade and said I would Mm -hmm. be excited if how he would have struck that. Oh, absolutely. But right now... I don't think Isaiah Simmons is going to be that move that would have put you over the edge, even though, Lou. I, I like the idea. Of no, he's not a CGJ trade talent. like last year, but I think he would I think he would fit the defense. I think he'd be a fun player to try to make work here. Oh, absolutely. And now you got to try and defend him, and he's going to yeah. be on the other side of the football there in New York. And there's a lot of guys that right now in New York – fit what Philadelphia is doing. I think Washington's in that direction as well. And all of these NFC East teams are built pretty similar to an extent. And I see I why they all want to make the same good, move. You know? They I think do, the, especially on the defensive side, Lou. I think they're yeah. going to be four of mm-hmm. maybe the top 15 defenses in the National Football League this year. Three-fourths of the division, I don't respect their quarterback, so it's why I'm so confident right. Eagles over the ladder. Very much so why I feel the same way about like the teams like the 49ers, Minnesota, other most mm. teams across the NFC, if we're being honest, that are contenders. But I will say, yeah, I mean, the Giants defense looks pretty good. I mean, all three teams, their rosters next to the birds are not pushovers. Interior, I think all of them are pretty solid. Maybe Dallas is probably the weakest on that front. Yeah. The edge position, man, I mean, you got a star on all three of those teams, multiple yep. stars on all of them, I think, in my opinion. I mean, you go D-Law and Micah Parsons, you go whatever combination of Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau and the other rushers that they have there as well. Leonard Williams is a stud. And then Washington, they got the sweats there. You got Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne on the inside still. How is this division 
going to not make it to the Super Bowl, in my opinion. And I think it all stems from the fronts. And I think they all understand that. And you draft to beat your division. Well, Philadelphia, they got to the Super Bowl last year. What they have, Lou? They had 10, 11 guys that could rush the quarterback. And what did yeah. they do to follow that up when they lost those guys? Well, heck, they went out and got even more of them. And why do you have the luxury of being able to potentially go and find a deal for Derek Barnett where as three years ago, he was just sitting on the roster just because you had nobody else. Well, it's because you have so much depth and versatility that you can make that type of move. And the Nolan Smith bringing that type of player in and signing Hassan Riddick, which you better start thinking about an extension for him in the next couple of years. And Josh Sweat evolving into this player and BG being at the top of his game. And the guy's almost 40 years old at this point. So how he's done a good job constructing that and everybody else is being reactive and trying to take a little bit of what Philadelphia is doing. And this year might be the toughest to get out of there, man. You got to invest in the offensive line to protect from some of these beasts they got on the edge in this division. You mentioned Hassan Riddick and Nolan Smith. One reason maybe the Eagles were a little hesitant at first to get rid of somebody like Derek Barnett is because of the injuries that could happen. Um, and that's why they want to be so deep up front. Cause I will say, Gino, you know, when you look at why like, 2019, 2017, 2018, 2019. The reason they were able to overcome so many injuries, I think at least, is because most of them didn't come up front. You were able to Mm -hmm. elevate your play through the trenches and you were able to overcome receiver injuries, secondary injuries. But what year when there were injuries, did they not overcome it? 2020, because those injuries were up front of the offensive line. There were 14 to 15 different offensive line combinations. So Hassan Riddick right now, he did say at his press conference that it looks like he's going to play in the opener, but he is dealing with a torn ligament in his thumb. Might not be 100% for a little bit. Nolan Smith hasn't practiced since that Browns game when he suffered that shoulder injury off the chase down tackle. So that is one thing, and I still would trade Barnett for sure. Um, those guys look like they're going to play in the opener. But that you know, hopefully these guys can get healthy because that, that's where a season can unravel. Is If you deal with injuries – it's always tough, but if you're dealing with them at those positions like the edge, you do not want to deal with that. And the approach that I think Philadelphia has been taking is the correct approach. I mean, Hassan, go get the surgery. Go right, get healthy. Just be slow with it, yeah. <laughs> we know what you are. Like you a Ferrari is a Ferrari. This year. Yeah. Exactly. And Nolan Smith is the same sort of player. He showed enough, I think, when you go out there and you ragdoll a guy who's 120 pounds heavier than you that you could play at the play strength of this league. And you saw his band athleticism and speed. He, he could keep up at this level. Get him healthy. Yeah. But the thing is, Lou... I still say that even, let's say Hassan Reddick is out, let's say Nolan Smith is out, the one-two of Josh Sweat, who's a number one edge player on most teams in the National Football League, and then Brandon Graham, and then the culmination and the conglomerate of moving guys around like Milton Williams, and then you could have Patrick Johnson and even activate, let's say, a young Kyron Johnson or a Teron Jackson if you could keep him on the practice squad. You could still get by because you have so much depth. And you have a 1A, 1B with Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat. You have a 2A, 2B with Brandon Graham and Nolan Smith. And then you just have all of this depth that maybe three or four of these guys that we've talked about won't even be on the team 24 hours from now. And hopefully you don't have to deal with that this year because I think Reddick and Smith especially, they're unique in their style of pass rushing. And they're more of the Sam linebackers compared to Sweat and Graham. So they're going to also drop back in coverage at times. Mm -hmm. You know, Smith was playing a lot of off-ball linebacker this summer. So the fact that both of them are injured isn't ideal, but you know, hopefully they won't have to deal with either player being off the field. I just don't want it to be a lingering. That's why I like what you were talking about with their approach to Reddick. Like, get this surgery take your time off the field let's Mm -hmm. get you back to 100 percent. because remember you look back to like a year like 2020 lane johnson's ankles barely hanging on all year that's what you don't want is a guy being on the field but just not ever having a chance at being 100 percent. so with nolan Mm -hmm. with reddick the cautious approach is the right one doesn't sound like they're going to miss much time but you can't mess around with injuries up front no not at all and especially with those two guys the first yeah. round picks, we know that they're going to come in and contribute right away. Hassan mm-hmm. Riddick Especially should have been the D Gino. boy. I mean, Nolan Smith was already going to have a huge role regardless of DB, but if you trade away your other veteran backup, like Nolan's going to get a lot of snaps. And let's say they only keep three linebackers as well, Lou. Right. So exactly. He's going to have an even bigger role on this team. And sure. Yeah. We'll see when the cards fall tomorrow, but get those guys healthy. We know what they are. Mm. It's what, August 28th? You don't kick off until September 10th. Got two weeks. 
Get those guys healthy. That's plenty of time in the National Football League. Nick Sirianni is at the forefront of doing this, and it worked last year. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Follow that formula, and I think this way to go about it is the new way in the NFL with so much sports science, so much athletic training and physical therapy and all this neuro mapping stuff that's going on. These guys can get healthy in short amount of time. But the thing is, if you put them back out there and you put a car in the street and somebody else hits it, hey, it might not be your fault, but somebody could trip over Son Reddick's ankle and he could be out for the season. So just get him healthy, get him ready. Go get McCorkle Jones week one. That's what he's got to do. <laughs> That's right. And at least the Eagles were not focused right now on quarterback trades. That was going on this week in the NFC East mm-hmm. as well. So we'll get into that coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Before we do that, we have a message from our friends over at game time. If you're like me, And you love to check out new stadiums. That's what I do. I've been getting big into college football. I'm trying to go to all the stadiums across the United States. There's only one app that I use. It's game time. I'm in a city. Let's say I'm up in Seattle. Just kidding. I would never go there and see Washington. I'm going to go up to Eugene, Oregon, check out a game. I open up my game time app, check out the instant view of the exact view that you're going to get. 3D view, you could see If there's an obstruction, see if you're going to get a good 50-yard line view, and you get the best deals, flash deals, and last-minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets with every kind of event in your area. If you're not a sports person, you can go to a concert. You can go to a musical. My fiance, now my wife, loves to go to the theater, so she always uses it for that as well. So download the Game Time app or go to Game Time on your web browser and use the promo code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off over at game time. The NFL is just a few weeks away. Get your tickets to all the Eagles games over at game time, download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Eagles fans. We're wrapping up this Monday edition of the locked on Eagles podcast. Uh, Gina, before we get into some uh, Cowboys Trey Lance talk, I don't know if you saw this today, but I don't know what the media is doing with this Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown thing. If you haven't seen, so they have been giving some questions. And and again, I know it's just comparison is just a nature of the NFL, especially when you have multiple stars at the same position on a team. But And again, I'm not like the Homer fanboy guy that, you know, always attacks the media if they criticize the team. A lot of times I think most of their questions are very valid. I think very fair. But they were asking today, like, it was almost like they were trying to pin A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith up against each other if they compete when it comes to catches and yards. And, like, uh, the, the one question to A.J. today was, do you feel like fans are starting to side with, like, we're either Team Devontae or Team A.J.? That's the kind of media-created – Who was it? Controvers- um, I think it was Ruben Frank of NBC Philly, who I think does great work, but yeah. – that kind of question, I don't know. I mean, that luckily th- with some receivers, like a Terrell Owens type, if he had a Devontae Smith, there prob- might be problems. Like receivers want the ball. But I think the good thing is with AJ and Devontae, they're so mature that, of course, they want it. Um, I-, I think they do coexist very well. And there was enough to eat for both last year. We'll see what happens if that wouldn't be the case. But I think their relationship is really solid. And that can be hard when you're two stars at a position that you're trying to command the football. First things first, I think Rube, who has done excellent work in his time, especially seeing the Nick Foles and Carson Wentz pick a side type of thing. Yeah. That's just an incendiary comment. It doesn't need to be made, right? It doesn't need to be made in this modern culture where you know the Jalen Hurts don't eat the rat poison. And I'm so glad that A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are as mature as they are at their young age because I don't think it affects them at all. I think they're they're best friends. I mean, look at when A.J. Brown is all souped up on all his anesthesia after he gets his wisdom teeth out, and he's shouting out Devontae Smith on Instagram yeah. well, Live. Well, he called they're him a boys. wide receiver like, one. Boys. Yeah, in the press conference today, he man. said, I have a wide receiver one right across the formation for me and Devontae. So, yeah, and look, A.J. Brown is somebody that, I mean, last year, the Giants game, the Eagles are winning 38-7. He wasn't happy. He wasn't touching the football. That is the nature of receivers, so I kind of get the point. But when you're trying to create that out of thin air, that's when it drives me nuts because there hasn't, there is no story there. If no. Brown had made comments or Devontae, 
play, something like that. But th- there really hasn't been anything like that. So to phrase the question in that way is, I don't know. I, I think I hope these two are here for a decade plus. So I think they're going to be too. And I think yeah. that combination of Jalen helps just as much because Donovan sure. was not the right guy to be the counter no, to Jarrell. he was not. <laughs> not at all, man. And if that's Peyton Manning, maybe it's a different story, but Donovan wasn't that yeah. guy, right? Jalen well, you know, is that guy. Here's the other thing is, you're if you're a receiver now, you have to be willing to coexist with other very good receivers. So there are not game. a lot of teams now that say, okay, we have our wide receiver one. That's cool. Like we're going to now just mm-hmm. go cheap at this position and bring in role players. There really isn't a, most teams want multiple wide receiver ones. So you're going to have to mm-hmm. deal with this on the majority of teams that are good. Yeah. I mean, look at the talk in Buffalo. I mean, Stephon Diggs even wants somebody else. He and he doesn't on even the have a side of him. But that's the, exactly, that's the thing. It's, it's a rare instance where a contender doesn't have multiple elite targets. Look at Cincinnati a couple of years ago. I mean, look at, even the Chiefs, you might not call them yeah. stars, but they're very good wide receivers. And, well, and they had Tyreek Hill and share. Travis Kelsey for years. So, yeah. And the thing is, if the Bill Belichicks of the world say, we're going to take away your best offensive weapon and you have to be able to beat us with your two, three, four, and five, well, it helps when you have two number one receivers. And yeah, we knew that Devontae Smith was great. But what was the one thing that you had to upgrade over in Jalen Hurts' first year of throwing was Quez Watkins being that number two weapon and to Mm -hmm. say and to try to start anything and any negative narrative surrounding this. Get out of Dodge with that. There's there's no reason for it. There's never been any comments surrounding it. Statistics in the National Football League. Yeah, we know wide receivers want them. Well, if these guys are putting up (laughs) well (laughs) over a thousand yards, they're going to get all their incentives in their contract. That's no big deal. Yeah. Maybe if it's down to the wire and one guy needs a touchdown in week 17 to get a half million dollar bonus. Yeah, I see. But I think these guys are both well over 1400 yard receivers yet again, and probably both going to eclipse eight plus touchdowns and neither of them are that type of guy. Devontae especially is not that guy, man. Like AJ might wear his heart on his sleeve, but it comes from that competitor mentality. I said, that's what it is. He just wants to go and show out each and every week. It's not from a selfish standpoint and he could be very selfish, but we saw Terrell Owens. Do these two guys seem like the same person? Not at all, man. Not one bit, in my opinion. I'm with you. And again, winning heals all if they're losing a lot of games and they're not touching the football, you know, but that that's just the nature of the game. And so I, I think to try to manufacture that, I, I think both, like you mentioned, they're going to eat this year. Their numbers are going to look mm-hmm. great. Even with Dallas Goddard healthy. I mean, both of these guys had over eight Devante surpassed 90 catches. If anyone year. should be mad, it should be Dallas. He hasn't hit yeah, a thousand right. yet. I would be a little upset if I was him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so that's the thing. All three of these guys got to stay involved, but I think they're going to throw the football more. And mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts is very good at distributing the football. I don't think he, you know, I think there were times that some other quarterbacks, you could talk about Nick Foles, you could talk about Carson Wentz in this way. You know, a lot of guys have favorites, um, but like Wentz a lot of time would really lock in on Zach Ertz. Uh, but mm-hmm. I don't think that's really the case with Jalen. I don't either. And you saw that in the Super Bowl. You saw that yeah. well throughout the regular season. You saw that week one, he hits AJ. Bre- that, that's what we're doing, Lou. It's it's that time of the year when we just have to get a story going after week Got one last year when AJ end. Brown yeah. has this big week and Devontae <laughs> Smith doesn't touch the foot. Oh, Devontae Smith, is he going to be? A- no, he goes out and he has a freaking 1,300-yard receiving season and he's competing for a Super Bowl. Well, that's the other these thing guys, about, you know. these beat writers are great. But they yeah. know better. Rube knows better than that. That's an incendiary comment that is unnecessary in the 2023 Philadelphia Eagles locker room. In my and the opinion. Eagles seem smart and they know how to handle wide receivers because if you notice early on in that Minnesota game, week two, what did they instantly start doing? Throwing the football to Devontae Smith. They put him in the slot and they got him going early with some quick receptions. Like the minute after mm-hmm. he didn't have a catch in a game, they're like, let's get him involved. So they're mindful of that kind of stuff anyway. They don't force feed. Like they don't say we have to throw to Devontae now, but right. that kind of stuff's in their head. And, you know, even you mentioned with like contract incentives or even like that kind of stuff. I remember Devontae's rookie year, week 17 against or week 18 against Dallas. They let him play for the first few drives just so he could break Deshaun Jackson's mm-hmm. rookie record. So I think that kind of stuff's cool. And um, they're definitely aware of that. So I think they'll handle all of all of those factors in a game very, very well as they have in the past for sure.
All right, Eagles fans, that's going to do it for this Monday edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. An eventful show for sure is the Eagles are going to have to get down from 90 to 53. So once Howie cuts that roster down, Gino and I will have a recap podcast for you right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers for making us your first listen Monday through Friday. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.